What's up, everybody? Big Tone AWACS is the Two Sides of Game podcast. We in here. We getting this thing going. Me and my brother right here. He been on this podcast thing for a while. He got me on this thing now. We are gonna be kicking some different topics and giving you our take on some things. Um, I dragged your ass out into this podcast world, man. <laughs> yeah, I know you got me in this thing, man. I, but I seen you been gaining traction with that thing, man. I'm yeah. proud of you. I was like, man, I gotta get on this. Bro, why not, bro? It's an outlet. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's an outlet for us to do this, man. People are paying attention. People are receiving it well. Fuck it, brothers. Let's, let's kick them game, man. Let's motivate these motherfuckers. You know and, what I'm saying? And a lot of people see how they, they just know us from the music, yeah. especially me. Yeah. So they don't know what, like when we get around each other, we always just be talking shit. We'll yeah. get in the studio, do a song, and uh, just talking about. Whatever for two three hours we'll kick business ideas for thirty minutes and we'll just start clowning and telling jokes. It, it, the conversation could go anywhere when Straight we just up. be kicking that shit. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes, bro, we just need to put a microphone over in front of us when we get together, and kick it. We just throw ideas at each other. We're bouncing all this motivation, and just all kinds of shit. I said, brother, this is where we need the camera, bro, because this shit content. So it only makes right to do this type of shit. And, and like I said, let other people experience and, and get a little bit of taste of what we do and how we get down, how your mind works, how my mind works, and how we just you know. Put it together, bro. Yeah, nah. So, one of the, uh, I know you're not big on sports. You catch the fight last night? Yeah, man. Shit. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, man. I wasn't gonna pay for that motherfucker. So, I was creeping on other people's live. You know I what I'm saying? I thing, too. I ain't gonna lie. Shit. That's all I need to do. But I it was watched like that $80 motherfucker. $80 or something, wasn't it? I think it was like 60 bro. 60 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know. You see? I mean, most of the time when you when I do buy a fight, I always regret it. Like, yeah. Man, I should have never bought that motherfucker. So I go on someone's live and I peep that shit. And and, and I ain't gonna lie, but it was, it was entertaining though, man. They was going, they went the distance. They did their thing on it, man. But uh, I was hoping uh, DS came on with the win, man. I was hoping he laid that motherfucker out for for the two nine. But you know, it didn't go that way. I'm 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 still salty from that Garcia fight. All the hype on that Garcia fight, and then the same with the Errol Spence fight. Like all that hype and all the this is gonna be such an evenly matched fight, the fight of the century, and all the fight of the year talk, and all these we boxing got promoters. Were, <laughs> we got pimped. <laughs> yeah, they, I, as soon as that, as soon as I seen the first few blows get exchanged, I'm like, oh, this man hitting like he hitting beating his little brother up or something on both of them oh fights. Hit with a body shot. He was done. It was kind of evenly matched though. And the hype matched the fight a little bit last night. Diaz had a couple good rounds in there, but he lost overall. But he, he yeah. made it entertaining with his drunken match. For him, yeah, for him not being a real boxer, you know what I mean? For him just going in there and, and stepping out of his comfort zone and shit, he, he was hit tagging on some clean ones. But like I was saying before, I'm not counting Jake Paul out, man. He's getting in the gym, he's training. That boy is in shape. You know, he, he he's taking it seriously. I know he's got more to prove because he comes from just being a YouTuber. So that's probably. In the back of his mind to go hard. Um, I don't think he's on the level of like some real competitive sports. He's obviously fighting people for entertainment, but I'm not counting him out. He look like he could probably knock a normal motherfucker's ass out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, normal people, but like <laughs> I don't think he, he that should have fly with no real boxer or nothing like. Nah, I, Canelo beat his fucking ass. Yeah, I don't, you know what I'm saying. He's he's cherry picking UFC fighters and he's taking half of their skill set away from them. They can't use their jujitsu or whatever. Yeah. Other skill sets they come with to the table and they can only use their hands. So it's putting them at like a disadvantage. Like, uh, I think Tyson Fury, if he put like one hand behind his back and him, that would be like the same thing. It'd be like entertaining yeah. a nice handicap. But I, I but, still put my money on Fury. Oh, for sure. But Fury a real champion. But then that's like I said, there's a, there's a, when you're talking that much money, bro, behind an event, there's a whole team of motherfuckers like you said, cherry picking, what's going to bring in the revenue, what's going to be exciting. There's a lot that goes behind the scenes to bring in these type of viewers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, There's I think a lot they, that goes on where we could be fucking pimped easily. He's taking a page out of Mayweather's book with that selective lineups and mm -hmm. wait until certain people's at certain points in their career to line it up with them and whatnot, too. So I, right. I'm interested to see him fight a real fighter one of these days. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want him to get his ass put from a real fighter. All right, I, got, I got a question for you then, man, since we're talking about fighting. Who you got your money on? Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg? Oh, I got Zuck. I got Zuck. <laughs> you team Zuck? Yeah, I'm team Zuck, bro. He looking like he That boy straightened up, huh? He getting serious. He looking like he more serious than Elon Musk. And Elon Musk strike me as a little weirdo a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he, he one of them. A little off. Them, um, what do you call it? Them genius fucking nerd, uh, crazy motherfucking uh, maniac type of people. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, he's <laughs> Probably creating a nuclear bomb trying to take over the world one day. Yeah, he probably, he, he going to, bell going to ring. He going to be thinking about some whole other Shit, he probably going fucking. I wouldn't even be surprised. He inject himself with some supernatural powers and shit. Do some crazy shit, man. I that think must... Zuckerberg the one like pushing the line for the fight too. Like yeah. he the one like, what's up? Let's do it Is for that right? real. Like he's just like, all right, fine, let's do it. I ain't gonna lie. You think it's really gonna happen? 
I last I seen they were giving all the money to some charities and they were it was already in uh, it was in the process of being finalized all the details. That's the future of sports, bro. Just entertainment. Let Just get run, two bro. motherfuckers that are known and put them in the ring and they gonna make more money than any real fight nowadays, man. Yeah, that's facts, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I I, I seen the the uh, the Jake Paul his brother too, Logan Paul. He doing the Bless w- you. Jake Paul brother Logan Paul He doing the, the WWE wrestling He just did the Summer Slam too They got a couple Big wrestlers from out here too uh, Usos You was talking about wrestling I, I never been into wrestling So I don't know much about it But uh, uh, you said you grew up Watching that shit huh Yeah all the Iron Sheiks And Hulk Hogan's And all the I do remember that time Hulk Hogan uh, Undertaker. And Undertakers And shit like that But other than that man I never been into to wrestling I never been a wrestling fan man yeah. I see some of them Fucking wrestling fans Be going crazy too it's entertaining, like the pre. It, that, I think that's where all the boxing and whatnot, the the pre-fight hype is coming from. Taking a page out of the WWE book, all the shit talking beforehand and Ric Flair and hyping it up. That's my favorite part of the wrestling oh, too. Yeah. When they get to talking all the all that fly shit, like man, come on, bro. I mean, they've been doing that though with boxing and shit, man. Any kind of these, you know, these matches, man. They've been doing that type of shit, man. Yeah, Tyson. Tyson was. Had a different kind of shit talking before his fights back in the day, huh? Yeah, yeah. All oh, that motherfucker. I eat your ass. I'm gonna make you love me. I'm gonna make you love me. That boy, you gonna be my bitch. Canceled so fast right now. If they had, if if Tyson was right now doing that shit, boy, they canceled his ass so fast. Yeah, shit, he was talking. That boy was amazing. But the thing is, that motherfucker was a real animal, bro. You watching him fight, you knew he was gonna get your inner your money's worth. You knew he was gonna go in there and you gonna see him just be an animal and take a motherfucker's head off, bro. You know what I'm saying? In his prime. You know what I mean? And then, you know, of course, when you got older, that happens every every fi- fighter, anybody in their career, man. They have their peak, and then they lose that. At the end, he even missed, man. I wasn't even tripping on it. I wasn't training. I was drinking. I was kicking it, and I tried to get in the ring, you know, and shit don't fly. But those are the good days. I miss those days of boxing and sports. Holyfield, Foreman, Tyson, you know, that's when motherfuckers was going at it, bro. What do you think? You you ever gonna jump into the celebrity boxing? You gonna get, you gonna try? Boy, hell up? yeah! <laughs> if that bag right? Hell yeah! I'd do that shit. That'd be dope, man. I, I don't, man. I'd do that shit for sure, man. But uh, it all depends. If you put me in there with a real big dog, then I'm like, damn. You put me in there with Tyson. Well, obviously, it's two different levels in the careers. But I'm just saying, you put someone in there with a real heavyweight, I'm like, the bag's gonna be at the real nice because I'll probably get my head knocked off. <laughs> ain't ain't scared of no YouTubers, but just keep me away from the heavyweights. Shit, I fight Jake Paul for that bag, but I mean, like I said, I have to work. A whole lot of way to get to that point, man. Because that boy fighting people that that bringing in some real money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no facts, bro. I take it. What about you? You get in the ring with him? I take it right now. Let's go, <laughs> man, run it, bro. Run that. Run that, man. Immediately, bro. Shit. I ain't gonna lie, bro. If, if, if you'd have to do people on, on on our level, I don't even know who would be a, a perfect match for my ass to celebrity boxing match. Who would you like to see me go fight against? Pick somebody, man. Um. It's hard to see. I would like to see go head up with any of the uh, with Jake Paul. I'd like to see that. That would be entertaining to me. The shit talking would be entertaining too. Yeah. Because yeah. I'd love to see you go back and forth and have to do the press conferences and whatnot. But I'd love to see you fighting at Diaz too. That'd be a good fight. Man, that'd be crazy. If yeah. Diaz doing it with, with with Jake Paul, why not? Man, you you know what's crazy though, man? Uh, that that type of fighting, I see some of my partners that are doing jujitsu and shit, bro. That's a whole different type of training, man. Like y'all on some street shit, I don't give a fuck how tough you are, bro. If you see somebody with them fucking ears, man, you better be on your p's and q's. Cause that motherfucker, you think you are gonna knock him out? That boy have you in an arm bar and a chokehold in the heartbeat, man. Yeah, it's a whole different ball game, bro. Yeah, you gotta get that. You gotta get that endurance up. That's the one thing Nate Diaz did have going for him. He had that endurance. It, it ain't gonna be easy to just take him out of no fight. He should have hit him with that Stockton slap. Out. Yeah, they was calling. They, they the announcer said Compton too last night instead of Stockton. I heard that. He said what? He had a little slip up. He was like, "Diaz from Compton." Who said like, that? One of the announcers from like Britain or somewhere. He had a little uh, <laughs> little spicy accent on him. I seen I seen one interview. He called him. Uh, he's like, "I ain't gonna say the N word, so we don't get bleeped out." He's like, "Come on, man. yeah." And Paul's like, "What? What'd you just say?" <laughs> Look, he, he got excited. <laughs> he be talking that shit, bro. He yeah. he really with that action. Man, fucking uh, uh, what was we gonna talk about? Um. Oh yeah, we, I asked you earlier, but we think we should. Uh, I want to get your opinion, man. You fuck with movies, right? Yeah, I fuck with them. Favorite mob movie off top? Got to pick one. Uh, Goodfellas. Goodfellas. What you saying? Why? Why? Why Goodfellas? Goodfellas was just like the the story was many, man. It, it, how it unfolded, just the way the the movie starts off and grabs you when they they got the body in the trunk and he making noise and they mm. 
clowning and then it, it shift around and tell the story backwards the front like and we sampled that on our game time man ever yeah. since i was young i always wanted to be a gangster <laughs> it just grabs you from the opening scene and it keeps you going the whole movie and it was just yeah like, it, it, and it seemed realistic as shit to me nah, they, and they they based it off a real story too so that shit that shit uh always you know more intriguing man when you know it comes from real history and shit man yeah i see a lot of the the Mob guys that be talking about the movies, how much of the mafia movies is yeah. fake. That's the one yeah. that they say it's got. Yeah, it, it's real. I seen old boy. Uh, what's his name? That talk about that. Who? Um, that he was talking about that. What's the little um, Francis? Uh, Francis. He yeah. got the YouTube. Yeah, he was always saying that 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 one was on script and shit. But Godfather too, because that 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 was a uh, that's my favorite. I would say Godfather, but they ba pretty much based it off two different families and combined it. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of that shit. I wouldn't say it was. They said it was actual facts, but it was spot on how they would get down you know what I'm saying yeah no that's I, I love Godfather too it's just the only reason I would give Goodfellas a little edge on Godfather because it's a little later in time and it's more relatable to me as yeah. far as the era it was in but I love Godfather well, Joe Pesci was a motherfucking fool in that motherfucker yeah, huh? yeah goddamn fool bro <laughs> I, like man but I don't I, sign shoes no more I seen that the fucking shoe sign box I actually went out there and checked out the, the Godfather house and Lake Tahoe. Oh, yeah, you saying that? I think it's a Godfather Three house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Took Fredo out on the boat for mm -hmm. a long, yeah, for a long fishing trip. Man, Fredo gave him the kiss of death. Man, that's fucking his own brother betrayed him and shit. It's kind of cold game. They, See, they say you can rent that thing for like thirty thousand a week or thirty thousand a month or something. Yeah, it's a whole compound. You saying that? We're gonna do a music video there. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Come on. So who, who's gonna ride on the boat? <laughs> who's going Boog, on the boat? But we're gonna send Boog on the boat for fucking up the first audio. <laughs> Boog, you, you taking this boat ride, bro? We're gonna need you to go hey, fishing. Boog, you gotta take the ride. Hop in. <laughs> we're having to sit down. <laughs> oh, man. Nah, man. But that's what's up. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, bro. That would be dope. If we went out there and ran to the house for video, bro, that, we had to do something dope, man. I, shit, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Now that, that you mentioned, I'm gonna look into that shit. Yeah, I don't That's think it's on I like think. Airbnb or nothing. I think it's like some private company that rents it out. But that would that would definitely be dope. Like for me, that's like bucket list shit. I'm such a big movie fan, mm -hmm. like of of certain movies. Like it was worth the thirty thousand to me busting yeah. for one time. Now I know you be like all the conspiracy theories and shit, man. Like that show, your mind be going into that world, yeah. and, and you kind of convinced me on certain shit. Like man, got me thinking. What you think about this shit? These motherfuckers say we got. The government found these aliens and all this shit. What, what's your take on that, man? You think that shit's for real? You think it's some shit they're trying to kick up dust? Or you really believe there's extraterrestrials living amongst us? I seen they had like I a, seen it. <laughs> a Senate special or like something with the government where they was talking about yeah. whistleblowers. Now they got this thing where they protect, they protect whistleblowers to where... What the fuck's a whistleblower? A snitch? Well, basically it's like... Say airline pilot, for example, he's yeah. he's flying and he says he sees something. The, 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 I think the law is for like military people. So yeah. if you're in the military and you're flying a fucking fighter plane on on a drill and you see an actual UFO, you yeah. can't get demoted or get kicked out of military for telling your story yeah. in the public or reporting it to the uh, to the Congress. Gotcha. So I'm, I'm that's that's what it is. But I I think it's a whistleblower also goes for people yeah. telling too. I think it, it's a law whistleblower that protects people to be able to do it to where they don't have to worry about losing their profession or having any backlash. So they had that, uh, like a, yeah, some kind of hearing yesterday, government hearing on it. And yeah. I checked, I listened to it, and it sounded like it, it's official. Like, I believe in that shit, bro. I think it's something out there. I don't think it's yeah. just us. I think I think they're with us right now. We don't even know. Yeah. I think they're so far ahead of us that they probably mingling amongst us, and we don't even know. But I think they're so advanced on this tech, uh, as far as technology goes. Like, yeah, that's that's uh, going back to Elon Musk. Elon Musk might be a motherfucking uh, yeah, alien. He might, he <laughs> definitely might hit a button and his whole face peel off. And some, you see who he really is or some shit. I wouldn't be surprised, bro. Man, I, we wouldn't, need, bro. And, and I trip. I, I mind you, like I don't smoke weed no more and shit, man. But there was many times on them little piehead fucking trips, just sitting there smoking, staring at the sky, just knowing there's there's no way it's just us, bro. We don't even know what the fuck is out there all the way. We have no idea. We only know so far. And there's got to be. I feel like there's whole other galaxies, man. There's whole other 
fucking another earth fucking way back there somewhere out there we don't even know about you know what i'm saying how would you react though if you if you, if you was just to the neck on like a camping trip and you just took a little walk or coming back from taking a piss and that you just ran into him i ain't gonna lie i hope i have my phone on me because i'm about to be rich in the motherfucker <laughs> you trying to sell it that's yeah. it i'm boy, trying to cash I'm, in yeah. i'm thinking dollar signs yeah i'm come on yeah i don't know man it all depends man it depends what if that motherfucker's only four foot eleven and shit you know what i'm saying what if that's a little motherfucker what if it's fucking a giant man what that fucker seven foot eight and the fucking Got claws and shit. You know what I'm saying? You gonna take him to the house like ET? Probably, have him doing I, I, I guarantee both. If, if one day in the future if we find out how fucking aliens look, they probably look like us. Yeah. Just a little different features. I don't know, bro. I probably try and I I probably try and turn into a pet or something and feed it some Reese's or something, man. <laughs> I don't. I think they're gonna be way too smart, but they they're gonna turn they us into their pets, bro. We're gonna be fucked. We're gonna be shackled to chain. <laughs> yeah, I'm not ready for all that, bro. I'm not ready for no encounters or the, the, uh, close encounters of the, the third kind and over. How you think? Shit, how you think? All right, so let me tell you this. Let me ask you this. We're, uh, you know, it's 2023. How do you predict how it's gonna be in 2073? Say so 50 years from now. How do you think life's gonna be just just normal life, man? What do you what's your prediction how it's gonna be fifty years from now? I think like assuming it's still here, assuming somebody don't fuck something up and hit something. Uh, it's button only fifty or years, man. It's been there millions of years. Yeah. yeah, I I think it's probably gonna be a lot less people in the day to day life. Like when you go to a convenience store, it probably won't be a clerk behind the counter. It probably won't be. Um, no one at Starbucks to get your drink. Like you've been in the airport in the SFO, they oh, yeah. got like those the machines the that wave at you and they get your coffee and shit. To come in, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a lot of that. Yeah. But I see like how the stores are set up over there overseas, and like I think it's in China or Japan or somewhere. They, yeah. Like the 7-Elevens don't actually have see-through glasses. It's like pictures, and you hit the picture, and then it pops out. If you want a Snapple or you want something, a ramen or something, it should just come out the glass. That's fucking crazy, man. There's really ain't gonna be no damn jobs, huh? I mean, really no jobs, the only no jobs are gonna be maintenance and those type of things. Yeah, fixing those things. But you gotta be I, that, really I think skilled. it's gonna be a lot of that. Probably a lot of, a lot of that. Not many gas stations, because they, it seems like they're trying to get the gas cars yeah. out of here soon. Yeah, it's gonna be, you're gonna be a, a super classic having a gas car. You know what I'm saying? Some Jetsons. What do you think? You know what I think, bro? I think AI is gonna take over. I think it's gonna be. A lot of artificial everything just under AI, bro. That's gonna be everything, and I think they're gonna have fucking robots one day that look just like humans. That people are gonna not have natural relationships anymore. They're gonna be able to program their perfect spouse, their perfect friends, their perfect <laughs> worker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You buy this people that have money. You know, I don't need to deal with this fucking crazy ass bitch. I'm gonna build me an AI fucking female. You know what I'm saying? A wife, and give her all the. Features and traits I want and personality traits and I'm a buyer and she's gonna look just like a woman and have probably woman parts and that's gonna be a fucking the future man you're gonna be married to a fucking robot <laughs> that's unreal it's gonna be a, a robot mix of sex doll and take over the world yeah that's what I'm saying that's all it is a robot sex doll made uh, a yes yes sir you know um, here's your meals here's your things here's the news and yeah, it's you don't need human be- interaction no more it's gonna be fucking crazy but it's fucking I don't know that's my weird prediction for twenty. 20- 73 I'm not looking forward to it bro I'm, I'm kind of old fashioned I like how we got it set up right now I'll be bit. dead bro by then yeah long gone 2070 shit man yeah the Jetsons I think like I, I always look at shit like that and I just look back to, like cartoons like the Jetsons and I, I always think like damn that shit was kind of spot on the bro. fucking Jetsons yeah meet George Jetson yeah the robots and yeah. shit you push a button to get your food out you don't have to actually cook like I could see that happening too Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It's crazy. You gotta watch like Back to the Future and those type of movies, man. And the the way they thought it was gonna be, and that shit's fucking another corny as shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I they see. might have flying cars and all that. I can see that happening. Directing flying at cars and airline uh, uh, traffic. You know what I mean? One day, cars that hover. Sounds a little dangerous, man. People... But that's what I'm saying. They, I'm, I could they obviously it'd be have to be a structured way. But I can see that happening. Cars just taking off. Yeah. Little traffic, traffic lights in the air. I like to keep my ass on the ground personally. Oh, yeah. I tried to. I'm a little old school. I'm a little old fashioned. <laughs> ride a skateboard on a ramp one time. I I fell down. I'm, like, I'm not. I'm not gonna ever fight against gravity, man. I like to stay grounded as much as possible. I used to be scared to fly on planes and long long ass flights too. You got scared of heights? I'm scared of death of heights. For I, real? Yeah. I hate that shit. You don't like planes? 
I don't like planes. Well, yeah. I, I don't mind them no more because I took so many flights, but the turbulence, it took me a while to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to actually research it and see what it was and why it was happening before I was okay. <laughs> and I was like... My dirty shaking. <laughs> yeah. I've had some many turbulence flights oh, fuck, where me the too. whole drink cart hit the roof. And oh, the I ain't seen that yet. Stewardesses. The, the, yeah. Everyone buckle up. You land and the, the pilot get on the intercom and say, thank God. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, this was a scary one. Yeah, and I remember, that was a I remember, short flight, too. Burbank to the Oakland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes those are turbulence. Because I'd fly Jet Sex in the smaller planes. Sometimes those feel a little bit more crazy than the bigger ones, man. But I remember landing into, um, I think we were in Yakima. I think we had to go to Seattle. Yeah. And then from Seattle, go to Yakima. So it was like a smaller airline. And I remember the weather was crazy. And I just remember the plane felt like it wasn't gonna, like it wasn't straight going down. It was shaking, yeah. but it felt like it was going like this. And I could just hear the, like they're trying to straighten up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I felt like we were just gonna hit the ground like this. And Kurt, I ain't gonna lie, I started saying my prayers on this one. I started almost sending the goodbye text. <laughs> I don't right know if we're gonna make this one. Yeah, and I don't be tripping on that. Usually that shit don't phase me. That one was kind of nerve wracking, bro, because I really felt like the motherfucker couldn't get the plane straight. It was coming in, I felt like it was going like this, and he was trying to straighten it. And I was like, "Oh, this is crazy. We don't fucking crash land this motherfucker, man." Bro, they got one of these one of these casinos in Vegas. It, it got like a all you go up to like the bar on the, on the top level, and the, the whole bottom is like um, gla a glass floor. Yeah. And I ain't trip out. I didn't know it was happening. I just got off the elevator and took a step out. I'm I'm swerving too. And said, so "Where's that? In Vegas? For real? Yeah. It's like one of the, one of the casinos got like a nightclub on the t on the roof or something." But you get up there, and as soon as you walk out the elevator, I didn't notice how I took a couple steps, and I looked down, and I just see free fall underneath <laughs> me. Well, I got... What, it was like the casino or something under there? Yeah, it was on the top of the casino. Oh, and I, I got down on my hands and knees and walked back nah. to the elevator, hit the button, <laughs> I, I'm out of here, man. Boy, no one caught that on fucking camera? Not Send that me. motherfucker to... Uh, uh, world star a full community <laughs> I didn't say a word bro I panicked out I was like man this is not him I, see, I seen one of the videos that was like a uh, it was one of those uh, I seen those one of those videos uh, where it was like a Chinese it was in China or some shit like that and the dude was I think it was a bridge yeah. and the pe people were panicking and shit like that and I ain't gonna lie I, 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 heights freak me out bro I get that weird ass feeling bro when you get in that edge but I don't know if I'll fucking trip out like that man I think just, I think, uh, yeah, you, I, I'll be on your page. I just stay on the ground, bro, and avoid that bullshit. That's you know like the saying? final level of Squid Games or something, bro. I'm cool, bro. I don't know that shit, man. I'm, man, I'm just trying. We to... done just survived some crazy ass shit in the streets. My ass gonna get taken out by some motherfucking uh, fucking heights. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> heights. I'm not trying to go swimming in the middle of the ocean. I can't. I ain't getting in no body of water if I can't see exactly what's in it with my eyes. I, bro, I, I see, see more body. shark attacks now than ever, bro. I'm not fucking with the ocean, bro. Ocean would fucking take you down, man. I think it's more getting recognition now because that Titanic shit now. People yeah. realizing how dangerous that fucking ocean is. But even the Delta out here. I don't fuck with that Delta. I almost died out there, bro. I had to get rescued in the fucking boat one time. <laughs> bro, I'm out there trying to jet ski like a dumbass, all drunk, and that motherfucker tipped over with them waves smacking. I'm trying to hop back on. I realize how much energy it takes to get back on a motherfucker, right? Yeah. So your arms get tired, and the waves are smacking me in the face, and I'm trying to breathe hard, and I'm fucking inhaling the dirty ass salt water and shit. Oh, man. Like nasty fucking shit. And then I'm fucking like, oh, fuck, I'm about to get swooped up under here. Then here comes a little boat. Hey man, you need help? Fuck yeah, I need help, bro. Come <laughs> Tell <on>. me. <laughs> like I gotta get rescued and shit. I'm sitting there like a little survivor on that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I'm I, I'm cautious with that adventure and shit, man. I'm not. I I like to stay in my little bubble, man. I keep stay my ass in studios and and some luxury cars or something. I prefer that any yeah, day over yeah. camping with wilderness. I can't do camping. I've never been camping. Never? No, I've never been camping. I I, I, I it don't appeal to me. Yeah. As far as like real camping, sleeping outside in a tent. With mosquitoes and fucking shit like that, I don't. I'm cool. I don't. I don't got time for that shit. But as far as like you know, like going to the ocean, retreating, something like that, I, I'm cool with all that, bro. You know what I mean? I not swimming in the ocean or or deep sea fishing type of shit, but just on the you know like the beachfront type of shit. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I never been camping. You been camping? I've been camping when I was a kid a couple times with my parents, and it was always miserable. I was always trying to get back to the house and get to some bitches or go <laughs> fuck off with my friends and shit. I couldn't stand that shit. But yeah. was like, come on, we're going to go do this for a few days. And my dad was an asshole. He'll like, he'd tell me, he'll give, I'll give you $100 if you swim to the raft in the Russian River, and I'd get in the water and it's fucking 35 degrees or oh, something. Shit. That shit would take you under, too. Don't that shit got an undercurrent to take your ass under or not? Yeah, I, I, certain parts of it, but we we was in a little calm part. But I, 
I wasn't a fan of that shit. My parents would troll me if I ever did some shit with that. Like that with them. <laughs> they, they was always on some bullshit, bro. Yeah, nah, we never went camping as kids, man. Uh, I know that here it's fun. Everyone's like, bro, you missing out. That's just fun. People sit around a campfire, drink some beer, make Sky some s'mores. Skydiving and shit? That's I don't want to skydive. No fucking I mean, way. Not, not me. to sound racist, but that ain't no Mexican shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like... If I was to ever skydive, I would. It would be on some DB Cooper shit. Like, what the fuck does that mean? That guy that got off with all the money and robbed the robbed the banks or something and jumped off a plane by itself with all the money. And that's not just skydiving for a thrill of it. That's because you're asking. Yeah, to get that's away, actually. That's about this bag. I'm trying to alter my life and yeah. my finances. I can't get it right normally. That I'd ain't. Be, I'm just bored. Just go jump out of a fucking plane. Try this shit. No co-defendants. No no accomplices. He just did it to the neck. That's yeah. A, that's a. I, I I seen people. I know some people that did it. I know it's supposed to be some kind of crazy little thrill and high. But yeah, I'm cool off that. I ain't going out like that. Like I said, I done survived some crazy shit to die. Fucking jump out of a plane. Yeah, I'm cool. I don't play with fire. I don't like to play with water. Even like them hot air balloons, man. I seen this one oh. where the um this was fucked up, man. This was sad too, and it, it was hella fucked up, bro. Like I don't know if you ever see videos like that, but it was. Uh, I think the the parents took the kid out. Uh, to celebrate and they got a hot air balloon and the motherfucker caught on fire and, and the mom and dad were a little older elderly I think the daughter jumped and then you could just hear him yelling and shit ah. fucking, it's on fire what could you do you're hella high in the air and that motherfucker's burning on fire I'm like yeah nah that's, that's a shit sure sign why I don't do shit like that man Hey, that's a hell of a position to be in too. Like, what do you do jump or you burn? I'm jumping. Like 9/11 when the yeah. buildings was on fire and the heartbreaking scenes where people was actually it's having to up. choose between that. Yeah. Oh my god! How are you, you gonna choose your death? Damned if you do, damned if you don't. In that situation, I'm just like, which one's quicker? Yeah, I'm. I'm out. I, you can't win on that one. Oh, there's some fucked up ways to die, man. I that, that shark attack. You seen that Russian? Um, that Russian, uh, I think it was in Russia. They're in Egypt. He was a Russian visitor or, or tourist, and he got attacked by a shark. You didn't see that one or not? It. That shit was crazy. They're over there. Literally, dude just out there swimming. He's yelling, ah, and you see the shark getting him. He's, like, panicking. All of a sudden, it's just getting him, and then just takes him underneath, and dude's fucking going through it. Bro, I seen That's once. Crazy shit. I be watching the nature channels, and I seen one of these ladies was, like, she goes in the water and researches. That's, like, her job. Mm -hmm. And she was... She was like filming a whale underwater, and this whale like comes up and starts interacting with her like uh, abnormally, like letting her touch on his nose, and it's a big old whale too. Yeah. And this whale like forces her onto its back and like pushes up, and she's not noticing why. She think, oh, we're playing. This whale wants to play with me or something. Mm -hmm. Whole time it's a big ass great white shark oh, that's coming up, and it's trying to eat her as the whale. He stayed in between her and the, and the shark and like saved her as like maneuvered her to the boat yeah. and then they realized in hindsight like damn this yeah. whale just saved your ass he was about to be a, a crunchy snack they're supposed to be other smart yeah they smart they smart as hell but that's not my lane right there bro. <laughs> man now do you believe all right now that trick that always trips me out man because like sometimes when uh sometimes when i start uh thinking that uh you know uh uh, uh how you say like unlucky or something you start feeling like man i always think we're hella blessed we're hella lucky to be human beings bro like to be born a human because all the life form out there shark a dog cat fish we could have been any of that shit bro yeah we every, every one of them. predators what's going on bangs here we don't give a fuck we know we all seen him on the camera yeah we all seen it he could wait yeah, nah. We could have been born anything, bro. And when you see a dog and you're like, "What's up, boy?" The dog has a soul. It's a it's a living fucking thing, bro. When you see a fucking anything, bro, a, a fish, a bird, we could have been born any of that motherfucker, bro. So anytime I start tripping out on life and shit, I'm like, man, I could have been a fucking goddamn dog or something. I could have been a cat, bro. We're lucky. We're lucky. We're fucking humans and we can make shit happen. You know what I'm saying? We got these brains to make shit happen. There's no excuse to fucking be anything else but great because you could have been a fucking a, a rat, a mouse. Yeah, you could have been anything. That's why, I, you know, another thing, like I used to be bothered by things in life, like, because I, I, I'm religious, so I used to always, I grew up uh, trying to learn about the church and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And it always bothered me, like, how does how do people do bad things to, like, a puppy dog or a, a, a little innocent dog animal that is, you're supposed to take care of? Or how do people... Um, how, how come God doesn't intervene? When I was young, I used to wonder, how come he doesn't intervene if he do what's right and stop um, kids from being abused or animals from being abused or people from beating up their wife or, or things of this nature? It used yeah. to really confuse me in my brain. Mm -hmm. And then I I thought maybe, like, it's that help, what helped me come to, like, grips with it was thinking, 
reincarnation might play a part. And let's say if you were somebody that beat up a bunch of puppy dogs for 10 years of your life and then you died mm. suddenly, like if you got reincarnated as a dog that got beat up, that's not such a bad thing yeah. to me. Like that was how I came to grips with things, bad things that happened that why God yeah. didn't intervene. Maybe this person was doing this in a prior life and he needed to taste his own medicine as far as a soul in that body. So I was like, hey, it ain't none of my business. God business, God business. I ain't, yeah. he don't think like I think and I can't put how, how humans are with our logic with him. Yeah. So that's how I kind of was able to maintain my spirituality through questioning all them atrocious acts and all these crazy people. <laughs> How could you hurt that puppy? Yeah, yeah. I feel more bad for puppies and dogs that do humans sometimes. Not to sound fucked up, but some humans are fucked up. Yeah. Some humans, you know, you a pedophile, a fucking goddamn piece of shit degenerate. Some humans deserve to get what they get. Facts. A dog don't know better, you know what I'm saying? Fucking, they don't. So I've always been that person, you know. We we and that's a lot of people, man. They worried about a dog, but then the fucking the motherfucking kilt over there, everyone pull out their phones and be like, oh, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Motherfuckers are hardest these days, but even humans, man, this is part of how we are. Everyone got so uh, immune to the violence and all the bullshit that goes on to the world. I got immune to that shit young, so I built like like thick skin, and I can't even explain it. Just just something that you have to go through. But now it's like I think everybody desensitized to shit now. You know what I'm saying? The kids are desensitized to shit. Back then, you see a dead body be, be a big fucking deal. Now it's it's normal. Yeah, yeah it's, it's whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, I want to see a dead body. Different era, brother. It's definitely a different era, like a motherfucker, man. From a different era, homie. Yeah, I'm an OG. Yeah, what you think? Man, you know, I don't know, man. Uh, fucking, uh, yeah, really, I don't know. How much, how time, how long are we in right now? 30 minutes. 30 minutes? 30 minutes. Are all the cameras running? That one's running too? I was thinking. Talk about how Hollywood trying to normalize the devil and all that shit. The devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. I didn't see that. I ain't too. I'm. I'm not really up on that subject, man. I'm not. I don't keep up on too much Hollywood. I do. Stuff. You know what? I did see that. What's that singer? That fucking dude that came out. Nah. What's the um the, the white boy singer? He's all the chubby and he's wearing a devil uniform on stage. He looks. I think he's gay or something like that. I don't want to talk about. That. I'm gonna have to. Get us canceled, brother. Get canceled. Slow down, bro. <laughs> We ain't, we ain't gonna yeah, we'll stay away from that we'll shit. We'll stay away from that, man. With all that Netflix and whatnot, man. What do you think about diving into the movies, Tone? If you could make one movie and direct it yourself, what kind of movie is it? Oh, we talked about this. But what I would love to do, and one day hopefully we can make this happen, it, we'd have to go through some hurdles and all, obviously, but the life story, it would be of, of Woody's life story, man. And it's not, you know, obviously our position to do it but it kind of is though because we all have our yeah. own experiences with him but just the 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 history of 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 him and we're a byproduct of all that i think that'd be a dope ass fucking movie because obviously there was a documentary that came out that gave some insight on a lot of crazy shit that happened you know and people understand that there's a lot of history out here that we've been through and his story was very unique with his circle you know what i mean we all have our own but we stem from that too You know what I'm yeah. saying So I'd be a dope ass movie One day Hopefully we could speak that Into existence Or at least be a part of it You know what I'm saying What actor would you let Play yourself in that movie um, I would say The Rock um. <laughs> <laughs> You're going straight For the top huh? Uh, I shit that, I don't man. know We'd have to find A young Cholo looking <laughs> Motherfucking uh, Where out. Young Iggs at man? I need the homie Young Iggs in that motherfucker yeah, yeah, he, I think he's got a case man Homie free the homie Young Iggs man But I, I always say Cause he got the tail He looked like me When I was young and shit You know what I'm saying Yeah yeah. Who would you find for you, man? Shit, I don't. We're gonna have to go casting call. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I don't know, bro. I'm gonna probably have. To, it, it's got to be the young me too. So it's got to be someone turned up. Too. Yeah, it's got to be. We um, have to find a little redhead for Wood. I know that shit would be hella fun to to cast him though. Like yeah. someone can't be like a little redhead like the Sandlot. You got to be somebody <laughs> a little, a little more. Look, uh, likeness, Scott, bro, likeness and whatnot. Yeah. And he's gonna have to be a hell of an actor, bro. Cause oh, for sure, that that'd be something huge. But you know, I mean, beyond that point, man, I do want to get involved with film, bro. I might have an opportunity to be in the movie soon. That's something I've been manifesting. I want to get involved with that type of things. I know you want to do film and get behind that shit. You know, as far as the directing, but that's something I would love to be a part of one day. Is getting in the industry. Unfortunately, for mine, for where I'm from, it's all in L.A. and Hollywood. We don't have nothing like this up north in California. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We don't have no. Opportunity 
opportunities. No one, no movie scenes up here, so it has to migrate towards you know Southern California and stuff. But you know, we got to open up the doors for our people, man, because ain't nobody doing it right now. It's kind of crazy when you think about it, too, huh? We're in such cl- close proximity to LA, and we don't really have a big like we have like um, Pixar that do like the animated yeah. movies and whatnot, but yeah. we don't have big movie headquarters, and we don't have like even record executives. We don't have no big major record. We got Empire. We got, that's the closest thing yeah. we got to yeah, it. Yeah. He, he's from the ground up, but we don't have like um, a Puffy Combs that breaks records or a Dr. Dre yeah. influencer. Like Ozzy does his thing on the label side, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he doesn't like roll out artists, and he's he's. Part well, we, of the music creation. We don't have. We don't really have the biggest names probably to come out. I mean, we have independent. We have a lot of people that are independent, successful like ourselves. But I'm saying on a big major level, we don't really never really had nobody. Yeah. Like E40. We got too E40. Short. Too short. You know, Mac Dre and that's big independent. But I'm saying that broke like big records and got to that level. We don't really. We've never had a um like QC and and all these different um in Atlanta or Khaled. Just a real mogul. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah, so, I mean, hopefully in the future we can, but I think the only people that hold that, like, is those names we mentioned. Yeah, I I think if anybody had a chance, I, Gold Toes is mini mogul. No, no, say. no, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. He, but if you go around and ask people in, in maybe New York and all these different states, who are they going to yeah, think of, you know what I'm saying? Like, Toes is a legend to us, and people's known he's in Texas, you know, he's known I'm not taking nothing away from Toes, he's a big dog. No, but yeah, I'm saying, it's just when you, when you mention he's not DJ Khaled, do Super Bowl when you, man, when you mention, when you mention Jay-Z, when you mention, yeah. you know, and that's not taking away from nothing from anybody, it's just the reality, bro. If you mention fucking, like I said, Dr. Dre, Jay-Z, we have no one in, up north in this category that could, that could be on that, that. Did you think we'll ever have it? Or you well, the way go to the LA way or New York. the way, or, who knows, man? Because I don't think it, I think it's harder to become a legend now than never. Yeah. Because attention spans are so short. I think back then it was easier. We they didn't have overexposed outlets. You know what I'm saying? That's why people blew up so much bigger. Movie stars are bigger back then. Um, now YouTubers are bigger than movie stars. You know, um, you have a. Uh, it's just attention spans are so short. You're popular for a short amount of time. You're booming, and then you're gone, and it's the next person. It's what's your next move constantly. Exactly. You drop an album, you got a, a certain shelf life for it, then it's like, now what? Or That's else it. We're going to whoever else is going to keep us What's the next flavor? You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I don't think people are becoming legends like that as much these days. And if you do, then it's somebody that's very rare and special. And I think who, who who's who's a new legend that's saying the past two years that you've seen being super legendary? On I'm, I'm, I'm talking about on that level, not just to our opinion. Uh, musically, just music, anything, just just that's gonna be. Man, I, I, the sad part is, I I think like um that that actor that died the other day from Oakland, like oh, yeah. he could have been on his way to doing something like that, or like like Slow B and and uh, Briss from Sack, like all these artists, Tys have been mm-hmm. dying recently. Like yeah. that's why it's been a little extra heartbreaking to watch from the outside in, like. These could be the people. They have potential to actually take it there. And these guys, what they didn't get their buzz after they died. They yeah. was actually building big buzz and big fan bases. And the trajectory was there for them if they just stayed working, in my opinion. Yeah, but yeah. I, all the big, brightest stars that i seen coming out of the youth, they've been falling off left and right, yeah. bro. Yeah, because unfortunately, it's, it's, it's motherfuckers are still tied to the streets. It's hand-to-hand shit, bro. When you're doing music, most likely you're from the streets. Because if you ain't, you're really not going to get the respect unless you're on some whole off-the-wall type of shit that has nothing to do with it yeah. so it's hard because you have to be respected in the streets to get some kind of buzz in the music or at least credibility but then it's now it's you got you know you really come from the streets so that shit follows you it doesn't go away just because you're rapping yeah that's you, one of you the, know what I'm saying? that's one of the things that me and you have been blessed to do is walk that tight rope mm-hmm. and get this far in our careers to transitioning from that to definitely business and being successful and being able to I think we were blessed with that business mindset too. Yeah. It wasn't just street shit. We wasn't just on some knucklehead shit. Like we was, you know, hustlers. You know, we come from different sides of the town. You're from Pittsburgh, I'm from Antioch. So I, I, on my side, the story is, I was always on some hustler shit, some D boy shit, getting money type of shit. So that saved my life having that vision. It wasn't just fuck it, let's get fucked up, eh, and go do some crazy shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had a vision. Like, you stupid motherfuckers, I'm getting some money. Yeah, I'm trying to get up out this this no sugar for the Kool-Aid and water in my cereal situation, bro. I got to get up. No, I, I need something no better. Yeah, peanut butter. Is, wish it was some meat on this sandwich. Man. 
Yeah, and everyone got like I said different circumstances, man. But I mean, I, you got to either blessed with it or you're not, bro. Yeah, I, you know. I, and I hope, I hope there is somebody emerging from the scene up here soon to take it further. Like uh, the young cats, like Simba, and and he's he seemed like yeah. he got a good. Simba, I forgot about and him. Antioch's yeah. been turned up, like yeah. Mike Sherman, Simba, yeah. and some of the younger artists. But I don't, I don't know anyone that's really making a lot of noise from Pittsburgh. You, you, like even that. that, and I'm not saying there's a lot of people who are successful. I'm not taking away nothing. There's plenty of people I'm gonna I could give credit and give them the flowers when I'm saying like compared to like moguls like if you really are thinking about the 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 people that are just this that, that the whole not just us considering moguls the whole world you know what I'm saying yeah like when you think of if you probably go to another country and they think of you know Michael Jordan or somebody you know there's certain names that are gonna be top oh, of yeah, the food yeah, chain for sure. so that's what I mean and it's hard to get to that level of of recognition now because I of that, definitely forgot about my boy Mr. Fab in that conversation too. Because he's For sure. he's definitely a staple in the Bay and big time, big time. I forgot. I, although I, he's not a mogul, he's yeah. definitely like synonymous with Bay Area and Oakland. Like mm -hmm. he does a lot for the community, and he's he bridges the gap and brings a lot of artists out here and and does his thing. So Fab deserves his flowers most Fab definitely, and Unk man. Over there, the yeah. Fab and Unk show too. And them boys be entertaining than a motherfucker, man. I know they be catting off. I think they was on you jet skis today. Like, man, man you see we, we you see we jumped in uh, 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 Unk in the hood, man. Yeah, uh, uh, Unk, one Unk of us now, boy. Now, he stamped. Yeah, he stamped. No turning back now, Unk. <laughs> you gotta get him some red Cortez for Christmas, man. Shit, nah, that that shit. He was catting off, but that shit was fun. That shit, that funny. That shit went up, man. But like you said, yeah, you gotta get. I could give my flowers to many people. Like we're going back to gold toes and fab i think we got plenty of staples like that man like that that's yeah that's a a, a, a a given man and, and um you know we salute anybody that's been successful out here that's still ticking you know but like i said i i would i know even 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 the 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 burners and the um oh yeah and definitely. the, the uh, all they all everybody no matter what level you get these guys have reached a level of success i'm sure they want to level up you know what i'm saying then you get to that point the guys are above them they want to keep leveling up so it's always you know, and that's until you get to the top of the food chain, until you're on some uh, 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 Mark Zuckerberg and um, Elon Musk type of wealth. You know, I'm sure there's always going to be some kind of motive to keep climbing. It doesn't feel like you're, you're big enough. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. as far as the music, I think I think there's that handful of moguls that it's going to be very hard to achieve the success to get in that same conversation and circle with those motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? It might just be a dying breed too. Like moguls don't just pop up every day. Like the new bird man. I, yeah. I don't know if he, if that's a thing no more people that some, that someone out there is like, I, I, I'm going to be the business person and I'm going to mm -hmm. be the next bird man or the next DJ Khaled. I don't know. You have to grow into that youngsters part. Youngsters aspire to be that. Yeah. You have to you grow, into, have that to part grow for into it and transition from one part of music to the next one. And you know, DJ Vlad used to do my mixtapes. He used to yeah, yeah, host that. my mixtapes. I remember that. Vlad the Butcher was his name before mm -hmm. DJ Vlad. For he found his lane with the yeah. Vlad TV, too. And that's the lane, too, man. There's podcasts and shit and, and hosting. The Adam 22s and the Vlads, they're good. It's their time right now. This is their time to shine. They got the, the platforms now, you know. Yeah. It's so easy to build a platform if you stay with it and you get the right content now. It's easy to be, you know. You don't have to piggyback off another person anymore these days. You can get to work and set up your own shit, and build your own platform, like we doing right here, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A funny story, bro. Vlad, I way back in like the mixed my mixtape days and that piff days and whatnot. I did that DJ Vlad hosts, and he was on the album cover with me, and. I didn't really know who he was. I thought he's, he's like a mixtape DJ from New York. So I was like, oh, I, I, I've seen his tapes before. I don't know how I had them all, but it was always like Vlad the Butcher and Beef Volume 1 and DVDs yeah. and all this shit. And it was just nothing but disc records and other artists going at each other. So it was entertaining. And I, I would follow it and watch all this stuff and keep up on it. Mm -hmm. So I had him host a tape and then... I put my tape, my mixtape together, and on the mixtape it was like a disc record of me going at some other artists. Yeah. And then I didn't think nothing of it. Like he gave me all the, um, he gave me all the drops for the mixtape, and I just placed them between songs and put it out. Yeah, yeah. And then out of nowhere, I get a message one day on like MySpace from DJ Vlad. And he's MySpace. Like, yeah. It was this how how old it is. Yeah. He sends me a message like you put a disc record without my knowledge on and my consent. <laughs> and at the time I was with Akon and them and yeah. four DJs was like a big thing. He's like. I'm, I'm notifying Akon and the core DJs and I'm going to get you blackballed and all this stuff uh -huh. with all my music uh, uh, my music pool Damn. like and I was like man what I was like bro like 
You sound crazy, bro. Like, yeah, why yeah. I see you? I fuck go upside your head. He's like, oh yeah, and I'm, I'm forwarding these messages to the Richmond, California Police Department. Oh, so I was like, man. oh so man, the, don't do it, bro. Man, the rumors are true. They be saying that boy. What they be saying about him is true. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, I, it, and then for, for he hell of years, I was like, kind of bitter. Like, man, that's throwing me off, bro. He threw me off with this move. And then a couple of years ago, I was like, look, man, I, I, I sent him just a direct message and was like, look, bro, I realize. You're a pod, you're a civilian, you're a podcaster or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I was out of my lane for coming at it, but you came at me crazy, bro. Yeah. So we kinda like buried the hatchet, but I still always like ah, But see that's I remember that's the, you, bro, yeah, before I you didn't was know you. that. I didn't know that story. I ain't forgot. Man, I mean you can't expect nothing less from those type of dudes, but they mixing normal civilians that are podcasters and shit and you're bringing it into the hip hop world and you're, and you're that's why a lot of these dudes are I don't believe in a lot of these shows where it's cool doing these podcasts but it's why these dudes like want to sound give them so much game I know it's for views but you ratting on yourself so much to these dudes that just want to use you for your views you know what I'm saying yeah. and you're mixing two worlds together and they're better it's kind of no different than I guess record labels and all these people from NWA and these type of Corporate dudes benefiting off the hood motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's no difference. It's just the same cycle, just different faces in a different game in a different lane. And there's definitely a lot of more people in the world that will call the police and will keep it on in the streets. Oh, so for sure. It, I, it's a no-brainer why they got their own lane and why all the Charleston Whites and everyone have emerged in recent years. It's, Man, it, oh, that's crazy, I get those it. type that of just, dudes. Like someone said, those are the most dangerous people in the world now. Yeah, they openly, they like, they'll get on YouTube and call 911 on your ass uh, these days for some views too. They're like, the yeah. Rocky movie, touch me and I'll sue. <laughs> I can't make this shit up, brother. Spark all this shit, talk all that shit, then you fucking, I call the cops on your ass. Yeah, that's a lose. I don't, I, I don't engage in those ones, bro. I don't want no problems, bro. I don't want no smoke. You know what, though? The, one, of the, the, one of the best ways I've figured the way to move now, bro, getting older and stay away. Is not even entertaining no bullshit, man. I feel like when someone's so angry at life and it wants to bring that shit your way, the easiest for me thing to do is not even pay no mind. Yeah. My initial reaction want to be like, well, fuck you too, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? That's why sometimes when there's any kind of bullshit going on, I always take that. I always call it like that that day to really think about how I respond. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anytime I feel like I want to get at somebody, like, you know who the fuck you think you talking to? Or this and that. Same, bro. I just... Hold on, I stop. I take that one day, that two day. If it's still bugging me after a day or two, then I'm like, look, bro, we got to, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got to you we got to talk, bro. I had the Woody curse of coming up under him for a hell of years on my career to where I seen how he, I learned from him how to, how to interact with fans and people when, before trolling was a thing, when people would do the, the trolling or if you got problems with somebody, where you at? Well, drop the low, pull up. Before drop the low was a thing and there was a ping. We was hunting them down. Where, where mm -hmm. you at? We trying to get oh, next yeah. to you and see what you talking about. Like, Same with me. Yeah. I was, it took me a long time to like yeah. mature out of that. Like, man, some of these people really ain't even serious. You're going to pull up on them. And well, back then, it wasn't as many internet track. trolls. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like it is now. Now these dudes are so comfortable with just, ha ha, you fucking cock a shit to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they know they could get some money out of it. I see some crazy shit. Like, people get on the, go to Japan and get on the train and just say things like, oh, troll Okinawa getting bombed or something back in the day. And it's just like, yo, it's like distasteful trolling just for some money. Like, sometimes it's only entertaining when they get their jaw rocked or somebody step up Man. to them. You ever, you ever ran into a troll? I never seen one in person, bro. Like I someone did. Get you online at, and then I did it one at that last show we did, bro. And he oh, was just standing you. there lurking in the <laughs> distance the whole time. I was telling my man's and them like, bro, don't let him come within five. If he come with five feet of my back turned or whatever, it's up. We're gonna tear the whole bitch up. But he he kept his safe distance and didn't mm. say a word to me. But if he would have said one word man. of any kind of anything, it was gonna go the other way. Fuck. I don't think I've ever seen encounter somebody getting at me online like that, and then seeing him in person. The 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 I think there was one time there was a dude, and this is years ago. He was uh trying to, I think he had got at me for a verse or something, and I maybe not responded or whatever. I don't know. And he made a diss song. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna bring this up because now I remember. I think it was in Utah. I think because I remember I talked to Doc about it. I'm gonna talk to Doc and remember this shit. I, I, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was. The dude made a diss song. I'm like, hey, what the fuck did this dude? And it, it got no traction, bro. Like, it didn't it didn't go up for nothing. Ain't nobody even responded to it because the dude didn't have no clout behind him. Yeah. But it's the principles. Someone tried to do something, 
And I'm like, bro, is this fool for real? I started getting at everybody, bro. Find out who this motherfucker is, bro. This motherfucker gets head knocked off. You know what I'm saying? It got back to him like, dang, you fuck with the wrong person. Dude's like, nah, man, well, I was just hoping we could just do like a battle rap and, you know, and try to get oh, some shit. Oh, shit, he wanted to do a dance off. It, once it came to him like he was about to hit some gangster shit, he was just like, yeah, man, I was hoping we could just try to, you know, benefit off of it. This, I'm like, bro, who the fuck you, bro? You don't, we don't play like that, bro. You don't do diss songs and, and, and do this type of shit and you ain't ready to get down like that. So that was new to me back then. But uh, I know there was one dude that was trolling and I think I was telling you about it. This dude was on my shit saying some off the pocket shit always respond to my comments saying yo you a bitch you ain't this I know about you just just coming up with some scenarios and then he ended up kind of telling that to another person that we know and that dude was kind of feeding into it and responding to him and then someone had replied to me like hey look at look at this is the dude that's trolling you dude was a, 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 a troll on um, PlayStation he was talking shit remember I was showing you the oh, video oh yeah yeah Xbox and, Xbox so it was some Xbox. chucky ass king of the hill looking fucking white dude that be on there talking shit and somebody pulled up on him fucking stabbed him or tried to shoot him or some shit then he's on the news telling the whole story yeah he came to my house and shot at me and stabbed me at. I'm like bro those are the type of dudes that be talking shit to you that rattle your brain and then you go lose your your freedom for going to fucking shoot and stab somebody like that man that's why I don't pay attention to trolls because I picture that type of dude that's the perfect example of a troll I'm a I, I, I'm actually a gamer I play PlayStation I've always been on PlayStation and whatnot too them headsets it's out of line yeah them them, them lobbies when they be on the headsets them little you you if you think the America ain't racist, get on the, get on oh, yeah, them headsets that. on Call of Duty or any of them. I remember I played games. that. I, I got into it for a little bit. Them little motherfuckers be in there. I don't know what the hell they be doing. Yeah, they I got into it. My boy Tito B, rest in peace, man. It was Tito B and Bugsy from Sergeant Limit. They had a little crew, a little uh, Star Clan, and they and Kev was at playing that shit. He got me in it. I had my little. Moment where I try to play, but I I my eight I got ADD, bro. I can't sit on the game that long. You can't bro. get after, in after, after, uh, 15, 20 minutes of me getting smacked. I'm fuck this bullshit. Yeah, I'm gone. I'm, I'll be on there still. I, I I've been on Fortnite recently. It's like a kid game. So yeah, my kids it, play that shit. Five, six year olds on there cussing their ass off. It'd be funny you, as hell. You got to start a Twitch then, man. I know, bro. I got to get to it. Fuckers can play games with AWACS, man. You go to play fucking Fortnite with Wax. I know my I know. my kids be playing that shit. I ain't gonna lie though. I got like a I got like a my, my screen name's Don Bino. I, <laughs> I call myself Don Bino 925, so no one knows me. See I'm now like, you gonna know Don Bino. Bino. So go, I can talk play. shit back, man. I ain't gonna get I ain't gonna get my ass uh, banned or nothing. Yeah, no, nah, I don't. I can't. I've never been into video games too much, man. Um. You know, I, I, I like I said, I play PlayStation. That shit's fun, but I suck, bro. I just cannot fucking. All I do is get smacked. Yeah. Run out there and these little motherfuckers call me a beaner and shit. Fuck you, beaner. Oh, they <laughs> brutal smack too. me. I'm fucking dead. <laughs> they brutal on that thing. They talking shit, but I know they motherfuckers been there all damn day playing that shit, man. How, how long we in? How long we in, guys? Fifty one. Fifty one. Let's let's get we, an outro out this thing. Yeah, right? I think that was cool. Uh, we could we could take little bits and pieces on it, man. You know what I mean? Uh. That we good, but yeah, brother. Uh, I mean, shit, man. This is like I said, this is dope, man. We th this is something we need to carry on, man, and just kind of sit here and bullshit. We'll, we'll we'll get some guests together here and there, man. But I don't want to rely on on a specific guests to carry this show. I think me and you just shooting this shit, kind of going through our experiences. You know, we'll be able to carry a lot of weight. Um, you have a lot of game, a lot of knowledge. You've been through a lot of shit in your life. You know, uh, same with me. So we could we could uh, put that together. You know what I mean? And, and shed some light. It'll be some inspiration. It'll be some 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 education. It'll be some just some bullshit, man. But we could sit here and put this together. It's dope. You know, let's keep this ball rolling, brother. You know what I'm saying? And you definitely. Know, and if anybody out there watching, I know it's, Tone got a big fan base, and I got one. If anybody got some feedback for us, you want to hear us talk about um, specific topics or you got specific questions you think we should be answering or something you want to hear us touch on, go on and hit us with the in the comment section or with a message and let us know about that too. Yeah. Like and subscribe, comment, like and subscribe, get this thing up, man. And share this motherfucker, man, because we starting on a brand new YouTube page, so make sure y'all, uh, uh, like I said, like, subscribe, and tell your people to like and subscribe so with this thing could go up so we can keep the ball rolling with y'all, man. Yeah, yeah. Salute, two sides of the game, baby. We outro.